I just spoke with the Florida-based artist Darkwater and Stars about her song High Levy. It's such a cool tropical song. And uh, yeah, check it out. That was High Levy by Dark Water and Stars. We're here with Dark Water and Stars now. How are you? Hey, Anthony. Thank you for having me. I'm great. Of course. Yeah. So your music's crazy good. It's weird how much awesome stuff you have online, like on your Instagram, stuff that's unreleased. And everyone should go check that out, by the way. 
like your social media stuff. It's it's wild. Yeah, thank you. I have a lot yeah. on there that is not released. I, I think I, I must have um, hundreds of song ideas and, and demos on there. And then just a handful of songs on Spotify, but uh, I'm, I'm working on, you know, finishing oh, yeah. some new stuff. So well, check out the Spotify too, because I like people can see like, how many yeah. people are listening to your stuff. Yeah, definitely. So all my music's on Bandcamp and um, I offer that for free. So you can check out, I think I've got maybe five or six tracks on there. So you can check those out and download those for free. I've got Bandcamp. Oh yeah, I didn't know that. I think I searched it up, but I didn't find it yet. Yeah. Oh, I'll listen to that. I look like, I don't know. There seems like a whole world behind what you do, especially like the visual aspect. You said you were a photography major. Yes. Yeah. I was a photography and painting major in school. So I really like to pull in all aspects of you know, like multimedia into what I do. And I really enjoy making music videos as much as the music, you know? So, oh, you can tell there's like love in it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And this whole thing with people saying, oh, you've got to, you got to present content on Instagram. And it's like, I don't, I don't know what that is. I just, I do it anyway, you know, to post it. But yeah. um, I have to say that Instagram has kept me moving though. You know, it's just this constant stream of ideas and I get to share it that way. And before that, it was just like, it would get lost and I wouldn't even bother recording it even. So oh, yeah. that it's definitely like a catalyst to create songs and have them become real real releases so uh, it's exciting yeah. watching it i don't know i like i get every time i see something I'm like yeah <laughs> like yeah um, it's a new thing totally. to listen to like i want that from an artist you know what i mean yeah definitely. To, like every like three years you'll hear like a single you know like right exactly i know it's like it's nice to go on there and and see somebody's everyday um life and in the process behind how they're making the music i really enjoy that i, I really enjoy like if someone's showing that their genuine selves and in that process and not just like the the final polished, you know, yeah. song, like that's like, okay, we, we hear that all the time, what goes on behind it. So I really enjoy that too. And I try to show a little bit of that definitely doing in the studio too. So, so you record all your stuff, correct? Yes, I do. Yeah. yeah I you record wear it. many hats. It's, yeah. like, wear them well. it's like crazy. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. And you record in what program? I record in Logic. Logic, right. Okay. I actually started in GarageBand and I think it was 2004 when I discovered it just came with the Mac. Like it was my first Mac computer. I'm like, oh, what is this? And that's where I, the whole journey started. But then I had a huge break in between, I'd say seven or eight years where I didn't have a way to record, didn't have a working computer that was, that could take what I was doing. So I was just, I was playing alive a little bit and, but really there was a, a huge break in between oh. that time and about three years ago when I started to record again. And then I just went full force into it and started building up my studio. Yeah. So, it's yeah. crazy how much material you have in three years too, you know? And yeah. That's... Yeah. I have so, I have so many unfinished tracks. Uh, I really need to buckle down and finish the best of them. <laughs> Yeah, the, it's like I said, like the world behind your music. I'm so interested in it. Um, like, what are some influences that you'd say that like maybe got you? Were you looking at anyone that was doing home recording and stuff? Or did you just feel the need, like the necessity to make recording? Really, no, not at the time. I'm, I didn't even think people were going to hear what I was doing. You know, I was just taking a lot. I guess in the beginning when I started to record about three years ago, I was taking influences from my early teenage years, like I'm talking mid eighties, late eighties, like bands like the cure new order, the Smiths joy division, you know, bands like that, Robert Smith's guitar playing Johnny Mars, guitar playing um, Simon Gallup's bass playing. Like I really wanted to emulate oh, yeah. that sound. And, and then like the, the cocktail twins, like the ethereal type of atmosphere. I wanted to capture that. So um, I started, um buying pedals and acquiring pedals um chorus pedals are like a huge <laughs> i'm a big fan of chorus reverb like all that that 80s early alternative yeah. sound is i think what i'm mostly about and oh, then yeah. i moved to the later like when i was in college and then 
there was like a lot of experimental indie rock that I was listening to, like the big names like Sonic Youth or Sebado, PJ Harvey. Those are huge influences. Yeah. Uh, in high school, Mazzy Star was a really big influence on me. It was like before Fade Into You, it was She Hangs Brightly, like that first album. I, I yeah. loved her vocal delivery. It was just so cool to me. And I think that I've, I kind of, I try to emulate that, but I don't like, I'm not realizing it, but that's like a big part of my, um, my vocal style, I think. Cat like okay. Power really influenced me too. And the way that her vocal delivery so. Your, your delivery on high levy is very unique yeah now that's I like that's something that i've never quite captured before and i think that was influenced uh do you know the band from the 90s luscious jackson i think they're big oh. hip, naked eye no i don't they're like they're an all-female band and they they have like a really cool kind of hip-hop soulful um way of like singing they they have like a lot of melodic lines but they've got like a little bit of it's like barely rapping you know it's kind of like more like talk singing it's really cool and um so i took my influence on that song from i think luscious jackson and um memories of miami and in, in the 90s like going down there it's like i think my experience in miami wasn't like what everybody else sees miami as it was so cool to me when i was in high school we would go down there on the train and we go to all these cool underground record stores and oh, wow. just like it had such a cool energy like yeah you have all the art deco buildings and just all this cool um international influence you know yeah so yeah. It, it that that song is like very like summer chill oh yeah, yeah kind of what down. i wanted to put out there and i never had really experimented with that before i was kind of doing a lot of darker stuff before that and i wanted to lighten up a little bit and um yeah. it's beautiful like such a beautiful song like it does it takes me back to like being a kid it really like yeah it's, so it's got funny. a vintage feel to it yeah okay. but not even that there's like a feeling in the 90s i feel with a lot yeah. of like i get like overwhelmed with that when i hear that song and oh, that's it, it sounds weird to say but like it takes me back to like spongebob <laughs> like listen it sounds like spongebob in heaven like it's so probably that it's probably the guitar the guitar on that um i have to tell you that that song like the way that that song came about is because i posted just a little quick demo clip that i had made before work like in an hour on instagram and i said hey any anybody want to lay down some bass on this track it needs some bass and so my friend Dave Wong, he goes by Detron Jams on Instagram. He makes amazing electronic music. It's it's like um, retro synth wave, and he uses all hardware. So he's not no. he's not really using like anything like soft synths. It's all you know like hard hard synths and real synths. So he he's a really great bass guitar player, and he sent me the track with the bass line on it, and then some kind of like vintage keys that he laid over it mm. and he structured it out in like a real basic way. And I was like, oh my God, man, this is awesome. This is going to be like a, a one hit wonder for us, you know, just like joking around. It was, is that, that's your highest streaming song. It is. Yeah. yeah, I got super lucky with that one. Oh, that's great. Um, so it, I have to really, I have to thank him for that because I didn't know the song wasn't even going to become an actual release track. So that I went back into it and I structured it kind of in the way that he had his idea for. He sent me the bass stem for it and I, I threw it in there and put some some cool effects on it because he originally had it really flanged and chorused out and it it gives it that retro. Definitely. Vibe, yeah. You know, so, you know, he definitely is a huge part of that track. It was a really fun coll collaboration. I love that you're so open to collaborating with people. If you I love a... collaborating with people. And I have never even met any of these people. And that's what blows that's... my mind. It's like, we just, we connect so well, just musically that we can make it happen. Yeah. I mean, that's really fascinating. The, um, like, would you talk about like what the song's about? Like the lyrics and stuff? Yeah. Um, I guess it's, it definitely is a sort of heartbreaky breakup song. I, for some reason, I'm a, I'm a pro at those <laughs> types of songs, but I've been in a relationship for 10 years. So I draw the, the inspiration, like really from the past or from friends experiences. 
So I think that song is like, um, kind of like being in this space in between where you're accepting and denying mm. that that person isn't right for you and, you know, holding in so much emotion until you just break. That's like kind of where the, the lyrics are stemming from like tears break the high levy. You were never ready. Um, realizing the person just doesn't have enough depth for you. Oh, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's definitely like a breakup song. Um, I think there's a line that says, bury me in dreams, talk to me in high esteem. That's kind of like when you're thinking of like a really good intimate moment and you want it back, but then you, you're realizing those are just lies, you know? So mm -hmm. it kind of weaves in and out of acceptance and, and denial and um, yeah, that's what okay. it's about. It's the, I feel like that's captured in like the vocal delivery, definitely. Yeah. I love the like it's I don't it sounds weird me saying, but like when you're like, mm-hmm, like that part. Okay, I know what you're talking so about. Good. Like I love oh, it's thank so you awesome. So much. Yeah. Yeah, that was really that was a new way um for me to to sing. And I the way I processed those vocals was really different. When I'm recording my vocals, I often will record at least two of the same track, but I'll sing on top of myself and sometimes four. So it has a really wide sort of stereo effect and I'll pan one right and left and maybe some sort of in the center. And then I might process the right and left completely different from each okay. other. I think on that one, I had, I have this really cool plugin called uh, vo vocal synth. And I think way underneath it, it's got that, plug in on it and it gives it this really cool texture that I've never really you know been able to um find before in the sound what uh plugins are you like primarily using is there like a brand that you pref like prefer really? for that song it was all logic plugins on oh. that one. but I I mean again I use a lot of external pedals like that guitar sound was two pedals and I actually have them here because when you you told me you wanted to do this song I was like oh I get to pull out my pedals <laughs> and oh, that, that's broke, like, up. oh did I break I was breaking up can you no, hear me right there when you I think okay. when you put it in the middle. it's called microcosm and this is like the magic behind that guitar song it's like okay it has such a dreamy feel to it and there's just so much layering going on it's almost like a synthesizer for your guitar so oh. that that was like the the magic on the, on the guitar on that one was that pedal nice. it's like you're hearing mostly and what was the other one what was the other oh i have uh, the other pedal was is this here this is like an italian brand it's called um let's see mastro valvula i don't even know how to say it and it's um let's see this is such a weird name how'd you hear that constant research or like pedal demos you know that i see on oh Instagram. you know so much by the way thank you for referring me to oh yeah am simulator what's it called neural neural oh the neural dsp oh my gosh yeah yes. i know isn't that I mean, so, so cool all of the demos that i've seen of that are just incredible it's like it's such top-notch sound it's the amp simulators on that are just like you can't tell the difference and there's i don't know i put it in my scarlet and i was just like blown away honestly i was like okay so i went right back and took back like the stuff i had just I bought it makes me wonder like oh am i gonna end up selling all of this stuff eventually because the plugins are gonna be getting to be so good that they're gonna outdo the the hardware <laughs> it's like know, it's weird. Like, the disconnect between like mic in it and then just di with the like you said technology getting so good yeah it's like who knows so maybe eventually I know oh, that's your magic though like all that stuff it's like your secret weapon uh, yeah I, I love it I could just spend hours just recording soundscapes that maybe make no sense on their own but then I'll throw them in the back of a like a track as a backing track and then I'll play over them yeah. so it gives it like that really like that depth I love that I'm gonna be stealing that strategy though for sure yeah, please <laughs> and doing that I love I love like inspiring people. I love to hear that I've inspired somebody. It makes me so happy. I really love to um, just support people mutually, especially mu musicians on Instagram. It's like a really nice community there. 
And uh, I You're mean, so I, open to helping people. Yeah, I love helping people yeah. like with music. I mean, maybe I should have been a music teacher or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever you're doing is working. I, I mean, I see in like comments and stuff like, to, I don't know. People are interested too because it's like I said, it's rare to see that just like randomly on Instagram. Yeah, I know. I know. You get so many people to just like send like a fire comment, right? It's like, <laughs> I, just, I really just, I like to express myself. I'm very wordy. I think uh, maybe too wordy for some people, but. <laughs> no, no, no. But so we can find your music on Spotify, Bandcamp, and it's Dark Water and Stars. Yes, Dark Water is one word. So that gets a little confusing pe for people. So okay. And, and Dark Water Instagram. And What'd you say? I, I yeah, Instagram is the same. It's dark water and stars. Okay. Yeah. And everyone should look that up because it's so cool. Especially if you're like a guitar player, you're a monster guitar player. We didn't even like talk about that. <laughs> like on top of all these effects and stuff, like usually I feel like that's like all like, a, right. you know what I mean? Like a person who's covering up, right? Yeah. You're just making a bunch of noise, but yeah, yeah but, I've been no. playing guitar for a long time, you know, since I was a teenager. So we're going on over 30 years of of guitar playing really and it's my one true love i started playing piano first off when i was five and then i started playing guitar as a teen and then in my 20s i started collecting all of these instruments wherever i would travel and i really became interested in um, eastern instrumentation mm. sitar and tablas so i do the uh that i, I dabble in that and hand pan. yeah the hand pan yes yeah beautiful <laughs> instrument do you use that on recordings do you I, yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. I do. It's cool. I'll, I'll run them through my pedals and, and stuff and okay. change some like a totally different sound. So. I thought I heard like Eastern influence in a lot of your recordings. Yeah, there definitely is. Yeah. Um, I have one song that's on Spotify under my just my actual name, which is Melissa Sean Griffin. It's called Connected. And it's a really world beat heavy track. It's like it's kind of dated because I think I recorded it in 2006 but I play sitar and tablas and all sorts of like cool stuff on that. And at the time I had this plugin called ethno instrument and it had some really realistic, cool instrumentation that where you played it on the MIDI controller and you're like, all of a sudden you're, you're playing like, you know, a, this very realistic flute or some kind of instrument from China. Like it is awesome. Wow. I don't have it anymore though. Oh. I don't know what happened. <laughs> no. Nah. Switching computers, you know. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for talking with me and for doing yeah. this. Thank you it. for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, of course. Yeah, we'll have more of your music on the station too, at the end of the to the rotation. Awesome. Yeah. So thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you. Sure. All right. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.